Hi everyone, my name is Christiana and today I'm here with Piper and we're going to be talking all about her music, her songwriting, we're going to be talking about mental health and uh, I'm Christiana from Teenage Mental Love and I just wanted to say a little about Teenage Mental Love. Um, I really started it because I noticed how many teenagers out there were really struggling and I really wanted to, you know, show to people that they're not alone, someone loves them and someone cares for them and it will always be there for them. So I really hope you guys enjoy this interview and I will link Piper's YouTube, her music, her uh, TikTok, and her Instagram all down below so you guys can definitely check it out and yes, we can jump right into this. Yeah. So firstly, Piper, I wanted to ask you, how are you doing mentally like right now? Right now, I'm actually really good. At the beginning of this whole lockdown thing, I was a mess. <laughs> <laughs> For literally the first three months of everything that's been going on, it was very, very tough, but I finally got a handle on it, and I've gone through this whole journey of self-realization, and I've done a lot of personal development, and I'm really, like, on my path now. I feel like I'm getting, like, thriving now, yeah, yeah. but it's been a journey. Yeah. It has been a journey, for sure. Yes, wow, that's amazing, bro. I'm so happy that, you know, like, it's been a journey, but, like, you know, it's always light at the end of the tunnel which is so amazing oh so true <laughs> yes so. yes and also I wanted to go back to like a little bit uh you know like your life when you're growing up and such I wanted to ask you what was your life like growing up yeah I'm actually from Louisville Kentucky originally mm -hmm. yeah I moved to LA though when I was nine yeah. so I lived the first half of my life in <laughs> Kentucky and the second half in LA yeah. um I originally came out here for acting, and then I picked up music along the way, and so I just had this, like, giant shift where I was focusing on acting, and then I started focusing on music, and yeah, it's just been a lot of growing throughout this whole process of moving, mm -hmm. and, you know, like, get garnering all of this, like, knowledge along the way about the entertainment world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm meeting so many new people definitely. That's what my life has been wow yes, <laughs> yes I completely understand and that's so cool for me to hear uh that you moved to uh you know California at such a young age too because I know a lot of people move there for acting but like usually it's like you know around like 17 15 16 so that's really cool that's really great and well I wanted to ask you when you were younger and like nine what was it like to you know go for something like acting you know when I was nine I had I mean, I think I still have this, like, drive and this spirit, but when I was nine, like, I just thought the world was my oyster and I could do anything because that's just, um, I had this, like, incredible support system that I'm, like, so, so grateful for. I always had this idea that I should believe in myself. So when I was nine coming out here, it almost felt, it felt kind of easy. I was just so excited. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I completely, I completely understand. That's amazing. And when you were nine, did you feel like you wanted to to do acting forever and pursue that? Yes. Mm. Yes, I totally, totally did. But I've always kind of had this go with the flow attitude mm. that I've aspired towards. So, yeah. um, you know, your life path changes as you go along. And, like, I like embracing that. Yes, I completely understand. That's yeah, wonderful. acting is still definitely very important to me. Yes, yes. Awesome. Wow. I just, like, get new things yeah. all the time that I, that I love to do, and I, try, I just want to do them all. <laughs> yeah. I completely understand. That's amazing, yeah. though. That's really wonderful, and I love that some people have a passion for acting because I know that, uh, you know, some people don't want to do it or some people find, like, you know, music more interesting, and I really yeah. love that. And also, when was the first time, like, you picked up an instrument and started playing? Yeah, when I, when I still lived in Kentucky, I've always been surrounded by music. Like, my mom plays the banjo, my dad plays piano and guitar. So when I was probably eight years old, I started playing piano, and I just loved it. Like, I would get up in the morning, that was the first thing I'd do. Yeah. Um, I would wake everybody up yeah. in the house, because, you know, piano's kind of loud. Yeah, of course, yes. But I, I loved it so much. Yeah. And then I started writing when I was 12. Wow, that's so cool. That's really young too. That's amazing. And also, yeah, of course. And also, do you remember like the first time you like learned a song and you like felt like completely accomplished? Yes. I still know this yeah. song. This is like ingrained in my heart yeah. to this day. It was the chestnuts roasting on an open fire, yeah. the Christmas song. Yeah. <laughs> the first yeah. thing I learned on the piano yeah. and I 
adore it still. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> and yeah, I know that can bring like nostalgia and make someone feel like nostalgic. Yes. Every yeah. time. Yeah. Every time I play that first chord, yeah. it's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I can <totally laughs> understand, yes. And that is amazing too. And also, what's it like living in, um, well, when you moved to California, living in an environment like that, especially at such a young age and growing up in that environment? In L.A., just yeah. as a whole? Yeah, yeah, as a whole, yeah. Yeah, it was so interesting because it's very different from Kentucky, but also the same in some regards. So it's just, I feel, feel like every place has its um, differences, which is really cool because I was able to understand both mm-hmm. sides, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and kind of, um, what's the word? Yeah, just kind of be surrounded by like different um, mindsets and different perspectives mm-hmm. all the time yeah. because I had like so many different experiences. Mm-hmm. And especially in the entertainment industry, like there's such a unique perspective on the world from a creative, like an artist standpoint. Yeah that I was, like, totally surrounded by in, like, acting classes and on set and stuff. Mm -hmm. So just being surrounded by those different energies was really special. Of course, yes. And I love that change of scenery, too. And I know Yes. Oh, the weather here? Let me tell you. I wake up every morning and I'm like, this is just amazing. Of course, yes. Of course. That's amazing. And um, I love that because I feel like it can um, be really, I don't know, a kind of a mood lifter, especially because like, I feel like the weather can really play a big factor in someone's mood. So. It totally does. I don't know what it is, but it's yeah. so important, kind yeah. of, it you does. know? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And I wanted to also tie in with weather. Like, I read on one of your posts that you said, like, in your ocean, the ocean is like a home to you. And I wanted to ask you about that, like, uh, how you feel connected towards the ocean and such. Yeah, so I, I mean, just water in general, like, I literally listen to rain sounds, like, to help me relax. I just love the water in general. So, you know, rivers and streams, I just feel so peaceful around them. Because it kind of is a metaphor for me about the flow of life, how, like, life never really stops flowing, and you just got to go with it. (laughs) Just being surrounded by that, like, as a metaphor is really special to me. Of course, that's amazing. I really do love that too. And also when it comes to mental health, um, is there any time like music or being around the ocean or changing up an environment ever helps you when it comes to your mental health? Totally. I like to write mm-hmm. in different environments for sure. Yesterday, I, you know, those like Inu hammocks yeah. that like were a huge trend for a while. Yeah, I- so I have this I have these trees out front of my house and I had Mm -hmm. never thought to put my hammocks on them, Mm -hmm. but I did it yesterday Mm -hmm. and I was just sitting there underneath the trees and like a song (laughs) came to me. I think it was just being surrounded by nature. Like when I go to different places, I just get inspired. That's amazing. Wow. And also I wanted to say like when it comes to mental health, do you feel like there was ever a time in your life when you realized like, wow, mental health really affects me or, you know, you struggled with it? Yeah, for a while, I started experiencing, like, a lot of anxiety Mm -hmm. because I'm, well, I used to be an avid overthinker Mm -hmm. and worrier, Mm -hmm. and I still have, like, really bad TMJ from, like, grinding my teeth at night. Like, I am so, I just have so much anxiety, Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm, but actually being in this period of time where Mm -hmm. I have to, like, literally focus on myself has been very beneficial because I'm learning that it's it's not something that can't that you just have to like live with as a crutch forever you can you can make the changes for yourself you can change your perception of things Mm -hmm. and like it can be very beneficial to go through like that journey of self development um in that way wow that's amazing I really love that that's so wise and such a great way to think of it and I really do love that that's amazing and also when it comes to yeah of course when it comes to social media and like having a community of people who listen to your music and follow you and keep update keep updating with your music out what is that what is that like you know it's really special Mm -hmm. having social media is a is a very unique thing that um is very new to this generation especially Mm -hmm. and it's I, I really enjoy having, being able to reach so many, um, like different audiences mm-hmm. and so easily and quickly. 
the thing though about social media, I'm actually taking like, I, I have to kind of limit myself because a lot of times we get caught in that social media is the most important thing and having a million followers yeah. makes you a better person somehow but that is just so not true and I'm learning that myself like it's not about a number and sometimes we get lost in that we forget that like they're people that's mm. not a number that's supporting you it's a it's people that listen mm-hmm. to your music so just kind of taking a break and like taking a step back to remember that you're not trying to get a million followers you're trying to inspire a million people wow that's amazing of course <laughs> yes and this, i wanted to say uh for example like i realized that with social media um it, it can be a blessing but there's also the downside the toxic side the addiction side and i realized how yeah, how that can affect someone so much and i wanted to ask you what's your a position on like you know social media being a place of toxicity or you know hate can really be fueled there Yeah, I think it's easier in some ways for toxicity and toxic energies to uh, work through social media because people can hide behind accounts that are sort of anonymous or people can, people just feel somehow more comfortable, there's my dog, (laughs) people just feel more comfortable saying hurtful things when they're not in person and that is really dangerous, but I also believe that what you give, it for the most part, you receive. So if you're like energetically really um, strong in who you are and mm-hmm. really focused on the support and love that is around you, then when if you do get those hateful messages, they won't be as bothering or they won't happen as often because you know that it's just their problem. It's not you. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's really good. Yes. I love that too. <laughs> And you're right, like, honestly, I feel like a lot of people, uh, the hate can get to them, and that's really, truly very uh, sad, and it's really something that's really going on in society, re- uh, very much especially the generation that we are in, um, you know, with hate being fueled there, and people being able to say whatever they want to say to you, and you can't do anything about it because, you know, it's kind of like an open space for anything, and I really love how you say that, and how you're so strong about it and you know um and I really love that you know some people don't let that bother them or break them down or stop what they love doing and also when it comes to uh, songwriting is that like a place where you can like like open up your feelings and like just pour out everything that you're feeling into your music oh definitely I do that (laughs) all the time because I'm a very sensitive person (laughs) like I've always been very sensitive to the energies around me and at one point it would take a toll on me and I would just be like crying all the time because I I literally take on other people's energies so easily but taking those and turning them into stories Mm -hmm. is a really good release because you have to somehow release those emotions or else they'll just build up inside of you so yeah songwriting and writing them down and even I have this really funny page in my (laughs) songwriting book the other day I was so angry so I just did a bunch of scribbles and then I looked at it and I like literally ripped the page in my scribbles and so I drew a little arrow and said well that felt really good (laughs) it does it feels so good to release your emotions and there's so many ways you can do it too like not just songwriting sometimes I paint (laughs) <laughs> That's amazing. Yes, I wanted to ask you about like what other outlets and hobbies that you do, especially when going through a stressful time. Yeah, so uh, I love painting actually and drawing. Like I'm not like a a very let's see, what's the word? I'm not a professional at drawing or painting, but it just like throwing paint on a page is somehow very therapeutic. Also, yoga. I do that every morning, even just for like ten minutes. Mm-hmm just connecting with like I like to do it outside so I like really connect with nature and that's really relaxing wow I love that's amazing and I saw on your page too and I really did love it and it's such like I feel like it's such a peaceful time too that a lot of people don't have especially with social media like you know constantly scrolling through a page you never really take that time to just let your mind rest and I really do love that it's (laughs) so important to connect with yourself daily yeah that's amazing and when you're also when you're going through a stressful time, do you ever, like, take, like, a mental health day or a little break or, you know, like, pause from, like, your everyday thing? Yeah. yeah, I did that yesterday. I took the whole entire day, and it was very hard for me because I always have – I have this thing where I always have to be doing something productive, and I always have to be 
just doing something. I It's hard for me to let myself just be. But mm-hmm. as part of this um, journey that I'm going through with myself, of like getting to know myself and going through this like healing journey, yeah. uh, I've realized that I that was something that I wanted to work on mm-hmm. was allowing myself to just be. So I've actually started implementing that very recently is taking some mental mm-hmm. health days. Yeah. So I did that yesterday. Like the mm-hmm. first, it was the first day that yeah. I have ever <laughs> allowed myself to do nothing, and it was awesome. Yeah. Okay. It yes. was so awesome. Yes, I completely understand. And it's like, yeah, I feel just to let yourself sometimes. Yes. Sorry, yeah, I was, oh, yeah, that's amazing. And I was going to add, like, it feels so weird sometimes to, like, just do nothing because we're always so used to being on this fast pace. Yes, this track of life. And that's why I feel like this, uh, you know, the time that we're in, like, really hit a lot of people because they're so used to moving so quick. And I really do. So love true. It. Yes. <laughs> And I know you said that, you know, it was an up a journey for you during this time, especially, uh, you know, with what's going on. I wanted to ask you, um, was there ever a time during this time, was there ever a time where you realized that, you know, like, you need to, like, take a little break or you need to ev- ever step back from, like, social media or, you know, take a little break sometime? Yes, that point actually happened two days ago. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very recent for me yeah. that I realized. I mean, I, I I kept seeing signs that I should probably um, take a little bit of break or limit mm-hmm. my time mm-hmm. on social media, like time blocking mm-hmm. when I'm when I let myself like give in to oh, the social media yeah. portal yeah. that goes on. <laughs> yeah. But it really, I really decided to do it just a couple days ago because I uh, I'm starting to listen to myself more often and like because we are we are all so connected to mm-hmm. like our own intuition and we. We know what's best for ourselves. Mm-hmm. It's just listening to that and not letting other people get in your head is something that's tough to learn sometimes. Yeah. But That's so true. Of course, yes. I completely agree with you, too, with that. And also, when it comes to, um, you know, like songwriting and singing, do you ever feel that, you know, it can like give you a block or it can become kind of overwhelming or stressful for you? Sometimes it's harder than others to get a song going or get something flowing, but at the during those times, I try not to push it mm-hmm. because I think that I like to consider songwriting like something that's there for me when I need it. Mm-hmm. So I don't like to I don't like to try to push a song out because they never turn out that great anyways when I do yeah. that. I just some, like sometimes I'll go a week without writing anything and then the next week I'll write like 10 songs wow so it's just letting it happen like yes. gotta let it go that's let it. <laughs> yes that's really great I completely understand just let it go for sure and when it came to writing um a little bit of brain I really loved your performance on wish 1075 and I wanted to <laughs> I wanted to ask you what was it like creating that and the process of creating that song yeah that was um, a really fun song to create because it started when I was, I, I had just met, um, a friend of mine and he played guitar and he had this riff in his head Yeah. and he was, he had never really written before, but he knew that I wrote. And so he showed me the riff and I was like, wow, that's really cool. We should write something to that. And then I went home later that day. This was when I was visiting home in Kentucky, actually. <laughs> And I went home and I couldn't remember the riff, but I like tried to figure it out and it turned into something completely different than what it originally was. Yes. But what it turned into was the riff that's actually on the song now. <laughs> and I just kind of, I felt so inspired, I guess, just like being around another energy that I never met before. And um, I like those words, just like, I, I think it was part of that I was at home and visiting yeah. home. Those words, like, just really were connected to me being at home at the time. Wow, that's amazing. It just flowed out of me. It just spilled out. (laughs) Yes, basically, literally a blessing in disguise. That's wonderful. That's so amazing. And do you have any, like, new music or anything that you're coming up with in the future? Yeah, I'm actually working on my second full album right now. It's a little bit jazzier. I'm really, really excited. It's about halfway done in production right wow. now so wow that's, Hopefully. yeah that's yeah. A, yeah that's so great that's so great and I wanted to ask you like in the when creating music usually how long does it take you when uh like creating an entire you know a single or uh finishing a whole song yeah 
so when I go into the studio, I usually have the song pretty much done. Mm-hmm. So it's just about putting all the instruments and then the production of um, like how I want it to fill out yeah. the song. Yeah. And that process, because I bring in some other session musicians sometimes, yeah. that process usually takes a few weeks of finalizing. Mm-hmm. Uh, for a full album, my first full album took about two years total. Wow. That's yeah, a, wow. It was a process. It was really, really, like, a special time. That was really fun. Of course. And also, when it comes to, like, taking uh, such a long time, I know, like, it, it's, like you said, it's fun and it's wonderful, but are there ever times where you feel like, you know, wow, I don't know if I'm going to get this done, or, uh, you know, you feel tired? <laughs> oh, totally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that definitely happens. I think that happens with any project that you're creating. Um but yeah, just just kind of allowing yourself to take a step back for a day yeah. is really helpful to like rejuvenate your mm-hmm. inspiration juices, okay. yeah. you know. <laughs> of course, yes. And when it comes to uh, you know support systems and such, I know you talked about that a little bit. Uh, do you have like any sp- uh, special friends or your family who's like there for you uh, during your songwriting process, or even if you're going through a hard time? My family, my mom and my dad and my sister are so close to me and they've always been huge supporters and I'm so grateful for them. I mean, they like moved here with me and like for me. So like, I'm like eternally grateful for them. And my dad and I actually produce together sometimes. So that's like a really special bond. So we're all kind of in it together. Wow, yes, I complete. that's amazing. I really love that. And I, I love that tight family bond because I feel like so many people need that in life. And that is so wonderful. And do you have any advice for anyone, you know, who wants to go into music, but they're a little bit scared or they're afraid of what people might think? Just jump right in. <laughs> like, start writing on your own, even if it's just starting with, like, poetry or if you play the guitar, starting with, like, learning all the chords and applying things that you love from your favorite artists yeah. to your music and just finding your style mm-hmm. just yeah just just do it really <laughs> yeah. but you got this like if you look at um your favorite artists and everyone who's made it like they had to start somewhere and they mm-hmm. started right where you're starting so oh, that's amazing and also any advice for like you know someone who's going through a hard time or they don't have a support system but they still want to push through yeah, it's so, um, it can be really hard sometimes to get out of your own head when you're like stuck in a situation where like your emotions are taking over. Mm-hmm. It can be really hard to see that uh, bright side at the end of the tunnel we were talking yeah. about when like literally all you're surrounded by is the tunnel. Of course, yes. <laughs> but just trusting that literally nothing is permanent and I've learned a lot of lessons from nature Mm -hmm. like if you go out I feel like everything that we need to know and we need to learn can be taught to us through nature Mm -hmm. you look at the seasons like they inevitably change and sometimes there's a storm but the storm will always pass (laughs) just kind of knowing that and trusting that and allowing yourself to sit with uncomfortable emotions so that they can release it can be hard it can be very hard but just trusting that when it passes it's gonna be totally worth it because you'll just getting kind of grateful for it now because if if you didn't have those experiences then you wouldn't be where you will be yes when it's amazing again and the sun is shining (laughs) exactly and I realize that some people say you know you have to have the bad days enjoy the good days even more and I really love that and what you said about sitting with you know uncomfortable you know situations you have to really do sit through those things and just let it all out because if you bottle it all in one day it just might be too overwhelming and it just rushes up emotions so I really do love what you said and yeah yes (laughs) and that's also allowing yourself to move on at some point because sometimes we get we get so stuck and we start like punishing ourselves internally for some reason. Like, I mean, I know I've been there. Like, I'm like, I'm not allowed to move out of this, but just knowing that it's healthy and it's okay to leave after you've sat with it. Yes, definitely. And that is so wonderful. I really do love that. And um, also when you uh, start talking about, you know, like energies and 
you know, um, you know, the ocean and such, do you ever feel that, you know, if you surround yourself by an energy that is negative, that will really influence you? I know you, you talked about that, but I wanted to ask you a little bit more about that. Definitely, especially if you're naturally sensitive, but also even if you're not, like subconsciously, the energies that you surround yourself with, like you, you take on because that's your environment and that's all you look at and see you in that time. And there's, yeah, energy is like always moving and always changing. So like even if you go to the grocery store, like you're taking on the energies in that store. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just being aware and learning how to protect your energy is really important. Of course. Yeah, that's amazing. And lastly, I wanted to say, do you have any advice for anyone? I know I talked about, you know, advice for mental health or, you know, music, but who's struggling during this time specifically? You know, they're away from so many people and they can't really do their normal activities. Do you have any advice for them? Yeah, I actually figured something out that was really helpful for me, specifically for this time getting grateful for the fact that you are staying at home. Mm. So Mm -hmm. I was experiencing this time where I like wasn't allowed to go outside, obviously. (laughs) And I was really bummed out about that. I was very frustrated Mm -hmm. and angry. But then I thought of a bunch of times that all I wanted to do was be at home. Like maybe I was out and I was wearing some very uncomfortable shoes and I couldn't wait to get home so I could take them off. Yeah. Or, like, maybe I was out with some people who were just very draining, and I just couldn't wait to go home and put on my coziest pajamas. Yes. And then I got really grateful for the fact that I was at home, and I'm allowed to do that. Like, mm-hmm. it's like everything I ever wanted is here. Of course. So just making a list, literally, of every memory you have where you just wanted to be home so badly. Yeah. It really makes it special that you're home now. Yes, I love that so much because no one really talks about, you know, uh, like writing down, you know, all those times that you wanted to be home, like when you're at school and you're freezing cold and you just want to be nowhere but in right. your bed. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and yeah I'm just getting grateful. And, and journaling is has been a lifesaver for me. Like yes. I've started doing j- daily journal prompts mm-hmm. that I just like channel for myself. Yes. And it's been really helpful in flipping my perspective. Mm. Wow, I love that. And also, yeah, journaling. I read about dream journals that I saw on TikTok and like writing down your dreams and you can even like find a way to yeah like position your dream to dream about something that you really want or manifesting you know something that's you want to happen in your life and I really do love that yeah <laughs> yes and I wanted to say I love manifesting I'm so into that <laughs> oh, that's amazing yes and have you ever manifested like I don't know like something that happened to you and like it like really took you by surprise or like you manifested and you uh, you know, really wanted something to happen to you and, like, it really happened and you were just, like, completely shocked? Yeah, I feel like that's happened a lot more um, recently since I've started mm-hmm. really tapping into this whole energetic mm-hmm. way of living okay. um, and, like, figuring out about the law of attraction and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, sometimes I'll just be thinking of someone and then they'll text me, like, that oh. kind of stuff. <laughs> it's very weird. It's very <laughs> exciting. <laughs> but also I think that... um Man, like when I look back now at um, when I was really little and all I wanted to do was like be an actor and I wanted to be on TV and I wanted to be on Disney and Nickelodeon. When I finally made that happen, I remember getting the call that I had booked a role on Nickelodeon and that was like like confirmation that I was exactly where I was supposed to be, that I like had the ability to make my dreams come true. That was, like, my one of my biggest manifestations that wow. came true that was immediately, like, wow, I did it. Yes, yes. Oh, wow, that's so, amazing. yeah, it's just, yeah, you just have to, like, believe in yourself hmm. that you can do it and it will happen. Amazing, yes. And I really do love that. And that all your advice is so wise. It's wonderful. And it's just so positive. And I really love that. And your energy, like, everything, like, you just bring so much positivity and I'm so happy that I got to talk to you. And I hope that <laughs> I hope that anyone who's watching that, you know, you realize that, you know, in life, I know that times can get really hard, but just keep on holding on and just know that someone will always be there for you and that you're always loved and you're always cared for. And I hope everyone enjoyed this. And I will link Piper's, uh, her social media, her Instagram, TikTok, her YouTube, and her music all down below. 
And I really hope that everyone enjoyed this. <laughs> yes, and have, a, and have a wonderful day. And thank you so, so much, Piper, for this wonderful interview. Yes. Thank you so much.